Hi everybody, it's been a while since we've had a Vanit tutorial, but I have now had some free time. And what I'm going to show you today is how to set up Omnet++ in Ubuntu and the latest version, which at this point is 20.10. So let's get started. Here I have my virtual manager because I am on Windows, so I am setting up a virtual machine. Why am I doing this instead of just using Windows? Well, there are a lot of fun bugs with Omnet++ and Inet and Veins when they're working together on Windows. And if you're not really savvy in all the C++ linker problems, this actually will be extremely time consuming for you to diagnose all these issues. Instead, this works perfectly fine in Ubuntu or a Linux system. So instead of wasting all that time trying to figure out these linker errors, Let's move over to Ubuntu and use that. I personally use Ubuntu when I am doing my research. So I do not run my research simulations on a Windows machine. It is a dedicated Linux box that I am running all my simulations on. It's a lot faster and also my simulation machine is dedicated to simulations. So unlike my personal computer that has all these recording devices and everything on it, it does not have any of that waste. It's a hundred percent for those simulations. And once you get more serious in your research, you might want to do something similar. So I have set up a virtual box machine. This is with Ubuntu 20.10 and let's get started. So we're gonna start up the machine. So now I have started up my Ubuntu instance. It's uh, just all default. And what we wanna do is install Omnet++ on our machine. Thankfully, Omnet++ has directions for how you can install on Linux. So let's actually refer to those directions. So this here is the Omnet++ installation guide, and this is chapter four of their guide, which is Linux. If you notice here, they actually say their supported version for Ubuntu is 16.04, but we can make Ubuntu work with the latest version, and I'm going to show you how to make that work. So we're gonna have some libraries that will not install, but there is a way to get them to work, and it works perfectly, and then you can be a happy camper with a later version of Ubuntu. So this is the supported Linux distributions. And then you walk through the prerequisites, which are the packages that you need to have installed in order for Omnet++ to work. Now you will need super user permissions in order to install your packages. So make sure that your user for your Ubuntu instance is set up properly. So first let's download and unpack our Omnet++ program. So we are going to actually be downloading 5.6.2, but no difference. So let's go to Omnet++ on our virtual machine. We're downloading 5.6.2. So we're gonna download this onto our machine. So now where we're waiting for this to download, let's install all the prerequisite packages that we need. So if we go to our Ubuntu chapter five, we can click the installing of the prerequisite packages. And this will give us the commands that we need in order to install our required packages. So first we need to do sudo app get update. What app sudo does is just saying that this is the command and we're doing our super user command app get update doesn't actually install any new packages, but it gets the, it updates the package list for upgrades for packages that are in need of upgrading. And it also gets the list of the new packages that have just come into the repository, in this case for Ubuntu 20. So we want to up, open our Ubuntu terminal. We can do control alt T, and this is going to open our terminal for our Ubuntu instance. And now we can write in the first command that we want, which was sudo app get update. And then I have to type in my password. Now this is getting all the packages, updating them, and then adding any new packages that have been added to the repository. And that is done. Now we want to do the next line in the commands. 
So we're copying this to install all the packages that we want. We may actually see some errors here around certain packages that we're going to want to install. And we'll get to that in a second. So we're going to paste our command here. And if you notice, the package WebKit GDK is not available. And we're gonna learn how to handle that in a second. But for right now, let's remove that package. So now all the packages for this installation are getting downloaded and they are ready to be installed. It's also gonna let us know about additional packages that are required for those packages, basically their dependencies that also will be installed. So after going through making sure this looks right, you can agree to continue. And this will download all the packages and install them on your Ubuntu instance. So now we need to get our last package, that is the lib webkit GDK that was not able to install earlier. So what we're going to do is type in sudo nano tc app sources dot list. And we wanna add an entry to our file. So we're gonna just go all the way down to the end of our file and we are going to add dib http colon slash slash and then we're adding the archive so cz dot archive dot run to dot com slash run to bionic main and universe And now we are going to save this and then we will exit. So now we have written that command and we now need to retrieve the packages for from doing our sudo app get. So let's do that again. sudo app get update. Now we're getting all the packages in from the new archive that we just added to our sources list. So that is completed. Now we can install WebKit GDK. So we'll write sudo app get install lib webkit gtk 3.0.0. And now we are retrieving this, and after reviewing what we are going to be installing, we say yes, and it will install. So after we've installed libwebkit GDK, we may want to use the Qt environment and also have 3D, visualization, 3D visualization support. So we need to install those packages, which are based off of Open Scene Graph and also OSG Earth. So let's install those files. So we go back and look at our installation guide. We are going to install Open Scene plugin and our lib osg -er. And check libraries, you can say yes, and this will install all those packages that are needed. The last thing is if you want to have parallel simulation, you need to install those packages. So that's given right here. So let's paste in those packages. We can see all the libraries that are being installed. We say yes, and those will be installed as well. Now there are several other packages that are suggested and these are optional packages. For example, if you want to capture and transmit network packages, then you can install this library. And then there's also some graphical installations that you can do as well. We are not going to be doing these options, so feel free to read the installation guide to understand that. Now we are going to go back and unpack the Omnet++ file that we downloaded earlier. So that was downloaded into our downloads. I don't want it here. I'm going to move it out to my home. So to unpackage our file, we type in tar xv fz. And then we can start typing the name of our file and we can hit tab and that will finish up typing 
in the file that we are unpackaging. So we remove this and you will notice that it has created a subdirectory, which is on that PP-5.6.2. So this has created the subdirectory and within the subdirectory is our OMNET++ files. So now we want to go into our OMNET++ file. So type in CD OMNET++. We're inside the file. And what we need to do is that OMNET++ needs its bin directory to be in the path. So in order to set the bin to the path, we need to our, go into our omnet plus plus directory and then use a set environment script. So we just type in dot set env. So also we may want our environment variables to be set permanently. So we need to edit our bash rc file. We could, so we can use gedit tilde slash dot bash rc. And this opens up our bash file. And at the very end, we want to add the libraries, which is going to be specifying what our path for our home variable is. You can find this within the installation guide. And we're going to add this line to the end of our file. But we need to change one thing. So add it to the end of our file and change this to be a 2. So you may need to close and reopen your terminal. So let's close this and then let's open our terminal again. So now that we're at the top level of our Omnet++ directory, we can now configure our Omnet++ IDE. So we can type in dot slash configure. And this will configure our Omnet++ IDE. If for some reason you missed a library that was required, it will err and it will let you know that something is missing. So then you can look into it, figure out what you may have missed. Maybe you missed the OSG Earth installation or some graphical library, or maybe you maybe didn't do the WebKit download correctly and that failed. So it will give you a hint and you'll be able to figure out what went wrong. So now that configure has been created, we can now compile Omnet++ and in order to compile it, we just type in make. And this will now compile the Omnet++ IDE. So after our compilation is complete, we need to verify the installation of our Omnet++ IDE. And the best way to do that is to run a sample. So we can go into the samples directory and within the samples directory, we can go into Dyna and let's execute the Dyna program. So this is going to open up the Qt environment, which is a great sign. That means we got our Qt environment installed correctly. And then this is the configurations. We can set up however we want. Let's say let's make this a small and we can hit OK. And now we can run our system and we can see that we have packets sending back and forth. So it looks like our Omnet++ installation is working. We can run this quickly see that it's going through. Everything is looking good. So let's stop this program and exit. And now let's launch the IDE. So in order to launch Omnet++, you can just type in Omnet PP. And this will launch up the Omnet++ IDE. And with that, you have the workspaces that you can go into. Now it's by default going to the samples workspace, but you can make your own workspace. So you can just change this to be maybe workspace or whatever you want to name your workspace and then click launch. So now you have it. You have your Omnet IDE installed on Ubuntu 20 plus and it's all working as it should be. So now you can follow any of the tutorials that I've already made for loading an INET and veins and getting those to work together. And now you don't have to deal with those pesky linker errors that you may have been dealing with in a Windows environment. So if you liked what you saw, please remember to subscribe to my channel and happy researching.